Hi, welcome back for our third and final segment of the ABCs of blogging. Today we're going to talk about the letter C, creating posts. Creating posts means understanding a little bit about content, about media, about tags, and about titles. Possible content besides your own might include announcements, promotions, giveaways, microblog entries, guest posts. There's all kinds of ways for you to go in terms of the content that you're going to deliver to people. You need to make some decisions about whether your blog is going to have just your own voice. In other words, you create the content and only you, nobody else. Or if you're going to allow guest bloggers, authors can come in and talk about their new books. Or whether you'll do promotions for new books or new series. There are really lots of opportunities for you to create content for your blog. That decision ultimately is going to be up to you. Tags become particularly important. As I mentioned in the last segment, tags are a way for people to search your blog to find information that they want. They want to grab at hand quickly. So as you complete a post and you begin thinking about the tags you'll use, make them as descriptive as possible. If you're blogging about a picture book, make sure that one of your tags is picture books. If the picture book has an animal in it, consider animal picture books as another tag. If it's humorous, consider humorous animal picture books uh, as a third tag. However often you have to tag that book to make it the most descriptive or tag that post to make it the most descriptive will allow people to search your blog more effectively, which means you're going to get more hits, people are going to be reading your blog, and ultimately people are going to be commenting on your blog as well. Don't forget that the use of media can really help spice up your blog. When I blog about books, I always include the cover of the book as part of the media within that blog. People not only want to know what's in the book, they like to see what the cover looks like. This is going to help them when they go out searching for the book. I don't limit myself, self, however, just to covers of books. In my personal live journal, I often will post photos from conferences, I'll post photos of things going on in my classroom, things going on in my department. I always have my cell phone with me, I'm always taking snapshots, because embedding media within your blog, again, attracts readers, makes it more interesting for people to uh, look at your blog as well. And finally, for each and every blog post, Keep in mind a title is going to pull readers in as well. I try to think of a title that is at once descriptive as well as catchy. I think there's a little something about reeling people in, trying to use a title that says, hey, this might be kind of interesting, or this might be funny, or this might be very political, I better be careful where I tread. So remember, media, content, tags, titles, they're all really important as you develop your blog. Now, I want to just kind of cover a few FAQs here at the end of talking about the content for your book. These are questions that were submitted to me when I posted a, a tweet uh, asking what people would want to know about blogging that they didn't already know. One of the questions is, what's the appropriate voice or tone for you to use on the blog? And I think that really does depend on what level of professionalism is expected of this blog. If this is your personal blog, if it's not tied to your school or anything else, then feel free to use a less formal term, tone, excuse me, to use a less formal tone. Feel free to insert humor. Feel free to be ironic or sarcastic if it meets your needs. But if this is a blog that's going to go up on your school website or on your work website, formal language is best and you better be using spell and grammar checkers along the way or you will find that people will be leaving you notes at that. Another question posed about blogs is how often should I post? That's an excellent question and I really hate to keep saying it depends but it does. It depends on what you want your particular blog to be. Do you want a, a blog that's going to show up every day? Or do you want a blog once a week? Is that more in line with what your schedule is and, and what you think you'll have to say? Some people blog monthly and not more often. And then there are others who blog every minute of every day. I think there's probably a happy medium in there somewhere. I tend to blog once a day to my live journal account about personal reflections. My blogger 
particular my account there about books I will sit down on a day off and I will post a schedule for 20 blogs, if I, uh, blog postings, if I can get that done, so that they will appear over the course of a month. So it looks like I'm posting every day, but I'm actually kind of posting in advance. Now, a really good question is how do you deal with comments at your blog? You have an option as you set up your blog to allow anyone to comment to screen comments, to tag the IP address of people who are leaving comments for you. And again, it's going to depend on who you project your audience to be. I let everybody comment at my blog. If I see something that's spam or something that is out of line, all I have to do is delete it. It's a simple step. If I have someone who's making comments that really are inflammatory, I will often communicate with that person and ask them, please, to have a side conversation with me. I'm happy to email back and forth, but the blog's not the pace, place for that. And if occasionally you get a troll, and I don't know if you know what a troll is, but a troll is someone who will post inflammatory comments just to get a rise out of people. If I have a troll that shows up, I track that person down and prevent them from commenting on my blog further you're going to have to make those decisions yourself. Finally, how do you get the word out and publicize your blog? One way is to immediately tie your blog posting to Facebook and Twitter accounts if you have them. Most of the blogging platforms have a simple little place that you can click that will immediately send out to Twitter and Facebook an announcement that you have posted a blog posting and people will then come and see it. If you don't have an automatic way to do that, you can certainly do it by yourself. As you go out and you talk to people, make sure that you give them your blog address. Consider having a QR code that they can scan with their smartphones so that they can find you online. Go out now. Get that blog going, spread the word, and enjoy yourself. Thank you.